He is someone who has helped taboo product like Bira Beer with growth. Also worked with brands like Leishers and currently working with the big brand like ITC. He has done his MBA from one of the biggest college in India and that is IIM Ahmedabad. So we tried answering one of the biggest question in one of the market years and that is, is MBA important for becoming a marketing professional? And on the top of that, we also discussed how FMCG brands can grow online as well as offline. So sit back, relax, close all the tabs and enjoy this value pack episode. <laughs> All right, guys. So we have my dear friend with it with me. He has worked with big brand like Licious, Bira, ITC. So I'm really excited for this particular podcast because I have been waiting for this since long. So with it, first of all, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Vedant. I know this has been long due, but uh, pleasure to be here. And let's get started. Yeah, yeah. So. Like straight away jumping uh, to the question and starting with the base layer, like let's set up the base layer. So we would like to like know about your journey and like behind the story behind it, like why exactly you started and came into this world of brand marketing growth. So over to you. So uh, I did my undergrad from DU after that. I had a few internships, but mm -hmm. I went for my master's straight away. Like there was no work experience masters. I feel, uh, I did my MBA and that he taught me a lot actually. So I interned at a consulting company okay. and I think that made me realize that I just want to do marketing. So those three months was one time that I felt that I want to work for a brand. I want to work on the consumer side of things. And then post my college, I joined Vida in 2018. So it's been about uh, five years and four and a half, five years since I started working. And Bira was my first company. I worked for three years in Bira, one year at Licious, and it's been one year at ITC. So I feel post MBA, everyone has, uh, like you join MNCs first, and then after two, three years, you shift to startups. I think yeah, I've yeah. had a very, very opposite journey to that. I worked in two startups before, and now working in a large company such as ITC. But uh, personally, being a consumer myself, I think uh, I've loved interacting with consumer brands. So Bira was purely offline business, nothing online. Licious was completely opposite. It was just D2C, just online, nothing offline. And ITC is a great mix of both in which uh, it's both offline and online. Like I'm the brand manager in the biscuits, in the Sunfeast team. So yeah. uh, a significant part of my business also comes from online, be it e-com, be it quick commerce. And obviously you have your general trade channel. So I feel... Uh, I've had a good experience so far, offline, online, now mix, and I'm just looking forward to keep learning more. Interesting. So like, like, like B2C part interests you or like you are planning to shift to B2B in the future as well? No, I think, uh, I'd like to continue with B2C, be it B2C or D2C. I think, uh, both do not have too much different among themselves. Yeah. That difference is slowly getting narrowed down with many D2C companies also going offline or the digital model as it's called physical plus digital. Yeah. So you take any large company, they have an offline presence as well to scale up, to get that uh, traction among consumers. You need that physical stores. It may be sound expensive, but yeah, I feel uh, there's not a lot of difference between B2C and D2C. So I've been more interested in the consumer facing part. No, no offense to the B2B or whosoever works in that field. That's a different ball game altogether. But so far I've liked my journey of B2C and I feel there's still so much to learn, work in different industries, work for new brands. And each brand is so unique in themselves. So I think I'll stick yeah, to consumer totally. goods. Nice. And like in, in the, in these sectors, you have worked with taboo products like Bira is one of them. Like it's into alcohol and Licious is into meat. So like, what was your experience with it and what complications does one faces when they are marketing for such taboo products? What do you think? 
be uh, obviously there's some restrictions by the government and uh, mm-hmm. yes they've yeah. been called taboo products alcohol cannot be advertised on tv digital mm-hmm. does offer some gray area so what alcohol companies do is do a lot of surrogate advertising you must have exactly. seen kingfisher water backpiper soda imperial blue music cds we all know these surrogates are not their core business or carlsberg glasses so a lot of celebrities are seen a royal Ch- challenger bangalore bank uh, royal challenger uh, music series as well yeah, so yeah. i feel the traditional medium of surrogate was always club soda what uh, music series and in all these different surrogates also imperial blues men will be men mm-hmm. series just stood out and yeah, stood it out. has stood out till date like even till date you ask anyone everyone will relate to the men will be men across genders not just male it, even the females is it resonates a lot but you know mu- music cd is not their core business similarly for bira obviously we had our own merchandise store we had our own glasses etc but uh, i feel surrogate advertising needs to be smarter as well it just cannot be a traditional uh, water ya kuch you need the consumer to see you and actually see those products when they are actually purchasing alcohol or ordering alcohol in a pub or a bar so in alcohol mm. i feel uh, surrogate advertising people will innovate it will get better and partnerships is one key like you try to associate yourself with some music events with some sport events with some outdoor activities with some artists so that doesn't have any restriction mm. it's still called a taboo product but because each state is so different in its own like kisi mein legal drinking age is 21 so kisi mein 18 kisi mein 25 so alcohol is a diverse industry you cannot obviously advertise alcohol in tv yeah. it's not recommended as well so i've done sales and bira i've done a bit of marketing i've done a bit of strategy roles so i've had different stints and i feel alcohol is one industry which is bound to go online the only question mm-hmm. is when will it happen it's not key why is it happening because all of us are so used to ordering online <laughs> right from a groceries alcohol being a very high ticket size item is still not ordered yeah. online in india so uh, i think that will happen soon all of us are waiting for that interesting and uh, like you have worked with and you are currently working with one fmcg brand like one of the biggest yeah. brand right so like it it uh, when it comes to fmcg you have to market uh, like both you have to find a great balance of both offline and online so like is there a is there any framework to go about it and like how do you guys go for uh, dividing online and offline and uh, like like how to go about it that's my question so uh, if i talk about itc or my brand in specific you need to figure out how much of your brand sales in a way just a saliency or ecom is still growing for a biscuits category for example your mm-hmm. traditional price points such as a 5 rupees a 10 rupees a 20 rupees chips biscuits people don't buy online it's mainly the family yeah. packs the larger packs those exactly. are priced like 99 200 rupees so still there's a large part of india which is still buying from a general trade channel like for example for a snacking category be it chips chips say 95% sales still come offline 5% is online for biscuits that number may be a bit higher but still it's 85 15 obviously this online is still growing it's a very hmm. large channel that has tremendous growth but offline still forms the bulk of the sales yeah so i feel in the online your budget is mainly divided into performance marketing through all your online commerce apps through your amazon flipkart big basket dunzo swiggy zepto blinkit and then you have another part which is on your digital activities which are mainly brand led like right? through digital activities you do not expect any sales obviously you do have you would want people to purchase but a lot of brand building activities are not tied up to an roi because the instant gain doesn't happen for example you see a tv ad you need to see it at least four five times that brand needs to continuously show it to you and it needs to build that connect and finally probably one two years down the line you will build some brand love or you will build some brand mm. affinity so mm-hmm. usually in brand building activities be it on digital be it on tv you do not see instant sales lift 
Mm-hmm. You might see instant sales there. For example, if I'm doing a promotion, a price of in a general trade in offline channel, ki twenty five ka price card ki maine twenty kar diya. You will see some sales lift. Yeah, that yeah. is there, but that that will not help build the brand. But mm. all your other brand building activities are not linked with a specific ROI. Obviously, you want to measure what activities you're doing, but these are done from a longer term horizon, not an instant. That I want an uplift in sales in this very month, so that doesn't mm. happen. Ecom, all your search campaigns, keyword targeting, that is related to bottom of the funnel, in which because the user has intent, he's typing that keyword. and then you show him your products so that can be tied up to sales but that's just bottom of the funnel even in ecom when you talk about top of the funnel activities such as your mm. display ads any other ads those aren't particularly related to getting instant sales it's more about building affinity towards the brand and the product mm. and i think like in in such products uh, distribution also matters like you have to first Correct. be on the store and you have to be on the great row like you have to be up front correct to vedant jisme ek cheez hoti hai fmcg mein bolte hain out of sight out of mind if your product yeah. is not visible it's gone it's so gone. distribution is distribution is the key uh key. if you want to scale up brand it's not volume ki ek outlet mein agar main 100 peti bill kar deta hu usse farak nahi padega mujhe 100 outlet mein ek ek peti bill karna padega usse zyada farak mm. padega so exactly. distribution is very important and it is the key in any fmcg industry you go to in offline mein distribution can only help build a brand that will get your repeat purchases and after mm. distribution it's visibility distribution to theek hai par wo aapka saman hi pada hai it's not visible to the consumer kahi niche rakha hua hai right. store mein rakha hua hai so consumer will not take it so then after distribution comes visibility hmm yeah makes sense totally totally yeah so like uh, let's uh, shift the gear and uh, i wanted to know like you have uh, like you have great educational background like you have uh, like educated from top universities of india so like i wanted to know like you have done mba and uh, like my straight away question is like is mba important for coming into the marketing field and what do you think about it and how it helped you to scale up in your career from graduating from top university so i don't think mba is important to work in the marketing field not at all obviously doing an mba can give you a sudden lift it is a platform I mean, as for example like you said top universities i think these top universities are just brands in themselves so your yeah. name gets associated with that brand there's a certain imagery that automatically builds even if you don't meet that person you just build that imagery but i think that is just a very small part someone mm-hmm. who has not done an mba not from a top college i i would still say he or she are very well learned very well creative more innovative than me or anyone who has done the mba from the best colleges so i think college can only play some part apart from that if you see the newer fields in marketing be it performance be it digital i think more and more people are coming up who had never even studied who had not done proper mba no. and they properly taught like a lot of mbas a lot of senior folks senior management people are still not very tech savvy do not know about digital that much do not know about performance and it's these younger folks who have just passed out probably in the 12th undergrad who know performance marketing so well hmm. obviously marketing is one field you actually yeah. get better with age because you see what's working you come across so many different campaigns you see what works with which industry obviously no one becomes an expert at it i would say everyone is still learning but uh, with experience you do have some sense of what will work some what will not work so i don't think mba is important i think once you get in the field you get the required opportunities that is important and then mm-hmm. it's all up to how 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 you execute that so i don't think a degree helps you obviously it sets up a platform and helps you build your brand but that is it mm. and like uh, two point of two point of few things like how mba helped you in your career like in uh, like building strategy building uh, growth strategy building brand 
so how exactly it helped you like that uh, theory that education system how exactly it helped you theory is one part but uh, at least in our mba college it was all about case studies there was no theory so mm-hmm. when you see so many case studies and then you actually try and relate that with what you want with some mm-hmm. of the frameworks some of the strategies and then you realize all the stalwarts or each industry leader is doing what so i believe those are more practical examples theory alone mm-hmm. cannot teach you and then you learn on the job where i feel, i still feel 90 95% learning happens on the job and before marketing anyone who is interested i would suggest you need to do sales first because mm-hmm. sales actually you need to know what's happening good. on the ground matlab bol good input people say that you should have your ear to the ground and that can only happen once you've done sales done because sales. just sitting in a corporate office you know very ac room giving out some strategy let's do this you, if you don't know what will work on the ground i think that's that's a very superficial talk you should know what your sales team can do what the retailers do what consumers mm. do so there's some consumer work that you still do in marketing but i feel because of your daily day to day work you're so disconnected with what's happening on the ground what's happening with your sales team your distributors your retailers that you just think my strategy will work and just forgetting what will happen on the ground so i think you need to do sales first then move to a marketing role because then mm. you understand what will happen totally on the agree. ground yeah totally agree totally agree and like by the way guys uh, like vidit has graduated from iim ahmedabad that's why i asked this question particularly so yeah moving ahead uh, like i wanted to know like what do you think about upskilling like you have already done your graduation from top university and you are in good position you have years of experience so what do you think uh, why upskilling is important or is it important or not and how one should go about it like i we have many professionals who are watching this and so like i want to know answer answer from you for this particular thing i think upskilling is very important no matter where you study from what you have done not done the world is changing we need to adapt to it so upskilling i feel is very very important you need to embrace that change and it can only happen personally obviously all these companies may have some learning and development budget they'll maybe get you to some workshop and make you attend some sessions give you some online courses but if you are not in that mindset matlab aap bacche to rahe nahi yaar aap kaam karne lag gaye so i don't think anyone can make you sit and study anymore it's all up to you and i feel uh, like i'll give you a very relevant example a year back i felt i need to upskill and need to know what is web3 what is crypto what is nft because that was mm. the craze so i never learned that in my mba i had to take that initiative on my own outside office probably mm. do some online courses read about it there's sufficient material online i think there's no dearth of material you have an abundance abundance of online resources built for free yeah. built for a very minimal fee so i think it's all up to your interest and then you need to see how i can apply that new learning in what i'm doing right now mm-hmm. so it is very important people like a very relevant topic right now chat gpt everyone is talking about open ai will it reduce human will it remove content creators artists writers so i think it will replace anyone human touch is very important that human judgment no software no robot no ai ai can do it but it's time we utilize that with advantage combine mm. both of them together because we can combine it ai cannot ai cannot have that human judgment but humans can take their judgment as well as combine the expertise of a software and combine both and need to understand that it will exist you need to adapt to it and take out the best parts of it in your job yeah totally like i was about to ask this question and you just explained it very well like uh, and in like we run our agency and like these marketing tools like ai marketing tools are really helping us to uh, speed up our process and at the same time uh, give uh, better results to our client because we can uh, predict things right like they, like if we just uh, feed the data it gives us the predictive results and most of the time it works so yeah that's that was a good point so uh, we have lot of uh, students uh, marketing students who are also watching this so like uh, we would love to know your input about how to start your uh, marketing career and how to get that uh, initial push 
to get started what do you think about it so i think if you have to work in any traditional fmcg company sales or business development as it's called in a few startups that mm-hmm. is the key and if you're working for a d2c brand where there's no physical it's mainly online then it's all about knowing growth marketing performance marketing digital marketing which i feel a lot of online courses youtube videos can teach you obviously mm-hmm. these youtube videos will not give you a budget when you executing a campaign let's say for 5 lakhs and that how to set up google ads how to set up meta ads it's a different ball game what's working doing ab testing but still mm-hmm. theory will always help i think there's yeah. education never goes to waste until the time correct like you have to combine that theory with practical so to all the upcoming students who want to come in the marketing field i think there's a lot of resources about digital marketing about performance about growth so you should know what is happening and then hopefully you get into a company in which people are ready to teach you people are ready to actually internships is a great way for you to even understand if this is something that i like or not like mm-hmm. so internships you may be working on one project but if you can see how the company functions how campaigns run how let's say all these metrics are calculated how company spends money how do they track roi so i feel uh, learn as much as you can in your internship start applying don't be afraid just cold call linkedin mm-hmm. messages i'm not saying just put in random messages your messages have to be very detailed very refined yes. you should talk about why do you want to join this specific company why you reaching out to that person it cannot be the same message you sent to 20 people across different sectors different companies and that will improve your chances and people want to give new talent a lot of opportunities and india i feel has sufficient opportunities for all of us mm. yeah great input thanks a lot for that so yeah uh as an end note what do you want to say to our viewers like how to go about in this industry and how do you see it coming like how where where we are going we i feel uh, like last year performance marketing was a huge craze i feel that push marketing is dying slowly and slowly mm-hmm. there's a limit to that. how much you can push Yeah, so there yeah. are two concepts one is pull marketing one is push marketing push is from the brand side i'm pushing pushing showing you ads giving you discounts but there will be a time when you need pull marketing to work like the consumer mm. needs to go after a product and uh, like earlier startups had a lot of funds the funds are dying new funding is not coming in the people who have funding their customer acquisition costs is through the roof uh, roas is dying roas is return on ad spend that is declining so it's time all of us realize that you can push to a certain limit mm. people need to resonate mm-hmm. with their content obviously there's no framework to create virality we don't even <laughs> know what goes viral these days yeah. so uh, obviously you can keep trying and you should know what your consumer wants what you what problem are you trying to solve for that consumer where does your product fit in his day to day life in his mm. consumer journey how does are you selling a product are you selling a lifestyle so i think that is one trend which is slowly dying push marketing people are still spending but the returns on those spends are decreasing and it's time for more yeah. and more pull marketing to come in yeah yeah totally i agree 100% So yeah man thank you thanks a lot for doing this i loved it totally uh, and especially that last last feedback that you have given us so yeah thank you so much for doing this with it and i am looking forward to the part 2 of it super soon definitely uh, part 2 ni a part 3 part 4 sab lo <laughs> i'll be more than happy to talk to you and uh, thank you vidan for doing this i also go through all materials that you write you also active on linkedin i think uh, that's great to read and not just read i feel writing is one part and just yeah. another tip to all our viewers watching this don't be shy of just probably putting yourself out there on any social media because uh, you need to put out no matter what field you're working you may be working in operations you may be working in finance consulting marketing end of the day you need to know how to sell yourself mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. even if you feel you can't create content be an active participant in others who are creating content because your opinion falls that discussion starts happening people start taking you seriously 
so don't be shy don't be that someone in my office someone in my college will judge me put yourself out there express yourself mm-hmm. great ending note thanks a lot vidit thank you vidat Thank you.